Today, we're reacting to yet another Binging with Babish video. If you remember from a while back, we reacted to a recipe that Babish made from The Simpsons for the isotope dog. Today, it's a recipe that he recreated from Bob's Burgers. The last video we did, did really well. So if you like this sort of thing, or even if you don't, leave me a comment and let me know. Yes, I love it. No, I hate it. Eh, I could go either way, whatever. Let me know. And if you're thinking you're just doing a reaction video because you don't have to cook and it's easy, yes, that's exactly why. I'm trying to have more consistency with the channel and that means posting every week. So I'm mixing in all these different things. So let me know what you like. That being said, let's get into a Babish video. I haven't watched one of his videos in a while actually. So this should be interesting. Binging with Babish, if looks could kale from Bob's Burgers. Let's go. Um, I'd like to recommend the burger of the day, the if looks could kale burger. Right off the bat, I'm pretty yeah, familiar with what kale it. looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, that is well, Swiss laughing, chard if I've ever seen you it. Got it. I also looks forgot my kale. Oh, please. I, I got it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging right. with Babish, where this week back we're taking to, a look at the, the if looks could kale burger from Bob's Burgers. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not the cruciferous leafy vegetable I know and love as kale. And that's true. What we've got here is Swiss chard. But that's because I got a bonus Bob's Burger up my blouse. Before we can do that, the first ingredient of any Bob's Burger is the burger. We know that he grinds his own beef and that he uses high quality ingredients. Sorry Great if I'm skipping around a little bit. I don't know how general, YouTube is with videos like this, so I'm trying to this brisket remain monetized as much as possible. And short ribs are easy enough to trim, but meat and fat into one inch cubes that we're going to throw in the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes until firm before passing through a thoroughly chilled meat grinder. Now I like to grind each type of beef separately so I can control the ratio. If you ever decide to grind your own meat at home, he did the right thing. So you always want to chill the meat and the grinder in the freezer. Get it as cold as possible. That way it solidifies the fat. And when you're grinding, it doesn't smear all the fat. And it keeps it a nice clean grind. Good job. Also, I will say that's a good blend for burgers. You're getting a good balance of fat and leanness. A good way to go around that is to just buy 90-10 ground beef or maybe 85-15. If I'm making a burger at home, I'm not going to go out and buy expensive short ribs and brisket. Bob likes a quality burger. He might be just grinding chuck, but he might spring for the good stuff. Two parts chuck to one part each, short rib and brisket. But at the end of the day, that truly doesn't matter because you're grinding your own beef and it's going to taste better than anything you can get at the store. When mixing the beef... All right, so kind of disturbing thing to think about if you're buying pre-ground beef at the store. You never know how many cows that beef is coming from. It's being processed in a big facility. Lots of cows. You could have 50 cows in your ground beef. Whereas if you're buying whole cuts like that, you know exactly what's going in your ground beef. Sorry. Now it's time to stick those in the fridge so as we can prepare our kale which we're gonna wash, pat as dry as possible, and remove the stems. Then I'm gonna to toss them in a mixture of one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon kosher salt, and a quarter cup of light olive oil. Normally I would advocate for fresh garlic, but on kale, it can easily gather into clumps and or burn once tossed until even. Yeah, whole garlic would either burn or could retain a lot of moisture, hold moisture to the kale so the kale doesn't get as crispy. So yeah, good call. We'll spread this out on a rim baking sheet and toss in a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, flipping halfway through, yielding some delicious garlicky crispy kale chips. Nice. 325, not hot enough to burn. You can see there's not a lot of browning on the kale. Good call. You can even throw it in a dehydrator if you have one. Time to prepare our burger. First, I'm going to toast up my bun in a little bit of oil on a ripping hot cast iron skillet. Bob strikes me as a bun toaster. 100% Before... Bob would toast his buns. I know Bob. Bob's a good guy. He's going to toast the bun. We're cranking the skillet pretty much as hot as it will go, plopping down our burger on a little bit of fresh oil, and only now seasoning with kosher salt. Now, Very much a purist when it comes to burgers. Guy, it should be just beef. Season the outside. If you're putting up topping spices, onions, onions and whatever, and inside the burger, you're making a meatloaf at that point you're not making a burger it should be just meat seasoned well and then cook of god is freshly in your heart we're making sure to turn off the flame before creating any other billowing clouds of highly flammable aerosolized oil one thing that i did notice is that he put the burger directly on the toasted bun toasting the bun's gonna help it a little bit but that burger is gonna be really juicy there is no barrier to prevent those juices from seeping into the burger. But if I was running my own burger restaurant, like Bob, I would wanna put a thin layer of something oil-based on the bun that's gonna prevent the water from seeping into that bottom bun, thus leaving you with wet thumbs when you eat your burger. So butter or mayonnaise, anything like that on the bottom of the bun would very much help that burger retain its integrity going forward. Otherwise, Mr. Andrew Ray may have a soggy burger on his hands. Placing our burger on its toasted bun with a big pile of crunchy kale, and there you have it, the If Looks Could Kale Burger, inspired by the Bob's Burgers cookbook. Let's take a look at that cross-section. It's been a while since I've said it's been a while since we've had a cross-section on this show. That is... That is a, oof. Oh, boy. 
So right now we've got dry bun, overcooked burger, Gruyere cheese is the only thing with any moisture in there, dry kale chips, and then top bun. Hopefully there's enough fat in that burger blend to give it a little moisture, and the cheese is gonna help a little bit, but if it was me, I would say a little garlic aioli, maybe a little squeeze of lemon in there. It's overcooked, but thanks to our fatty blend of flavorful beef, it's still plenty juicy. And despite being 10 to 30 degrees over target temperature, it still entered the clean plate club. And I know this is a weird time to say it, but Jess and I are trying to eat less meat. And another burger from Bob's Burgers gave me an idea for a veggie version. Well, uh, the burger of the day is the uh, charred to a crisp burger. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a uh, uh, burger it's with Swiss. I like the Babish cinematography because if you notice the food on the counter is much more vibrant and then he desaturates the background, including himself. So like the background looks dull and it makes the food really pop. And I like that. Fringe benefit of probably charred. Just in a hot pan with some oil for a minute before adding half a small chopped onion. Go ahead and saute those together for five to eight minutes or until nice and soft. Add a clove of chopped garlic. Saute for an additional 30 some odd seconds or until fragrant. Season with kosher salt and drop the mixture along with one 14 ounce can of rinsed and drained black beans into a food processor. Pulsing and scraping down the side of the bowl until it's relatively smooth, but it still has a little bit of texture. Speaking of which, we're gonna add one cup of cooked and cooled brown rice, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper, one teaspoon smoked paprika, and a quarter teaspoon cumin, mixing until distributed. That is like old school veggie burger. Also, it's tough to make it vegan. You need like something like egg to bind everything together. I don't know if the, just the rice and beans and vegetables are gonna do it. We'll see. You know, like ground beef, but healthier and beanier. Season with kosher salt, mix it up, and normally this is where I'd tell you to start forming patties, but this is indeed my first ever veggie burger, and it's missing some important elements, as I would soon find out. I was thinking a fast, hot fry and one inch of 350 degree Fahrenheit oil would both make the burger crisp and help it retain its structure, but it did neither. In the end, I was able to barely keep the patty. See, he put lettuce on the bottom to keep the bottom bun from getting soggy this time. That would also help, but it's just gonna pool all that grease on the lettuce. Yes, yeah, pretty, pretty gloopy. So we're back to the drawing board, adding one large egg white and a quarter cup of plain breadcrumbs, yes. which is going to help give a great deal of structure to our patties. Depending on your mixture, you might need to put these in the fridge to firm up a little bit, but on my end, these guys are ready to head over to the stovetop, where I'm going to cook this thing just like a normal burger. The deep frying didn't seem to have any effect on the crispness of the burger, and even though we added breadcrumbs, that might help. I just wanted to see if I could make a functioning veggie burger at the end of the day. Day. So we're gonna top this guy up with our kale, just like the other burger. Top it up and serve. And it kind of looks the part. Maybe a little vegetal. Let's take a look at that cross section. Compared it's still just not beef. like a complete burger. Like there has to be some kind of sauce on there. I can't put nothing on a burger. That's hard. I, I like that he combined two burgers. You know what I call it? What do you call it? The Kabin Abdul Chard. You know, because Kareem Abdul. Okay. I, I mean, that. overall, pretty good. Like he did a lot of good techniques. Like I don't think that recipe is an amazing burger that you're gonna get on a, at a restaurant anywhere. But I think it's a good base. You know how to make kale chips now. You know how to grind your own meat for a burger. If you made this, let me know. If you want to see me recreate some of these recipes, let me know that in the comments as well. Babish is the YouTube cooking guy. Like he started this, he made it a trend. I have so much respect for the guy and he makes really good recipes. I made a few of his in the past. This one, probably not my favorite, but really solid. I think he's getting a lot of people in the kitchen that wouldn't necessarily feel confident cooking. I have so much respect for what he's done and the dude has 10 million subscribers. So killing it, man. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at doesn't pay full price. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.